Saturday, the 29th of April, racing at Turfentain on the stand side track, the WSB Championships finale featuring the WSB Premier's Champions Challenge Grade 1 and the Johnson Workwear Computer Form Sprint Grade 1, as well as a number of other Grade 2 and Grade 3 feature races, Blockbuster Day Racing, and we're joined on the line, as always, when it comes to the high felt by Alistair Cohen. Alistair, morning. How's it going? Yeah, morning, Graham. It is undoubtedly my favourite race meeting of the year up on the half felt. I mean, it's not called Champions Day for nothing. It's obviously um, evolved over years um, with the Triple Crown or final leg of the Triple Crown and Volker of Triple TR are now dropping off the card. But with that said, there's still some good quality and... Uh, over the years, this meeting has favoured punters. I remember, it must have been about a decade ago, Carry On Alice won the computer form sprint, Legal Eagle won the Champions Challenge. Um, there were all sorts of red-hot favourites. They all arrive. And that tends to be the trend on, the, on this card. So I'm um, hoping that um, Lightning can strike again and punters can walk away uh, with a big smile, especially with the pick six carryover, expected to get to 7 million rand. Okay, well, we've got 10 races to get through, so let's get straight into it. The first race is a maiden juvenile plate over 1160 metres. The first race off at 11.50, 12 carded. The early favourite at 33 to 10 is number 10, Calamaretta. And then we've got uh, at 7 to 2, number 11, Phantom Express. 5 to 1, Red Bomber, a first timer. 7 to 1, number 9, Vivacious Vicky, a first timer. 8 to 1, number 5, Tale of the Comet, also a first timer, and number 12, Thing Called Love. So the two race runners at the top of the boards that's number 10, Calamaretta, and also number 11, Phantom Express. Doesn't form part of the exotics. The bipod will start in race two. What do you make of the first, Alistair? I've heard a good word about a lot of first-timers in this race, Graham, so I think punters need to watch the betting here. Um, getting fives that Jahan Jansa van Furen thinks number seven, Red Bomber, is well above average, the son of Lancaster Bomber. Gavin Lorena takes a ride drawn on what's perceived to be the right side of the track, hard up on the outside rail. Um, we've seen the Lancaster Bombers really hit the ground running. They're all impressive-looking horses. So um, I've watch out for number seven, La uh, Red Bomber. Number nine, Vivacious Vicky is a full brother to Vaz Vicky. I know that he's held in high regard. It's not Pettigrew style to wind them up first time. So um, wherever he runs, expect progress with this run under the belt. But um, I don't think it will come as a surprise if he were to go very close in the first um, and Candace was running number two, Bren Hazen, although he's going to be effective over further, he is very, very nice indeed. So um, they expect him to be running on, hopefully, into the minor positions and then can uh, tee him up for races in the future. Of the race runners, I think number 11, Phantom Express, is probably the right one. I think he'll be the first race runner home. Whether he wins or not, or she wins or not, remains to be seen. I thought she moved up strongly to, to go and win the race from Ripple Effect last time. I know that Ripple Effect is also highly rated by Ashley Fortune. Phantom Express Press drawn towards the inside. Peter Sunday and Paulie and uh, Paul Matchett have a good thing going on with their winner at Smith and Wesson at Turf and on Thursday as well. So all is set fair there. And Matchett does have an annoying habit of winning the first race on these big days with far worse horses or worse form than what number 11 Phantom Express brings in. So maybe he'll hit the ground running. I know nothing about Sean Terry's runner, number eight, Taylor of the Comets. I know nothing about MK's Dreams in Bakur Sankale, who's obviously of MK's Pride fame. Um, but, you know, they worth watching the betting because they are nicely bred. But all in all, the talk about the first time is especially number seven and nine. There's definitely some food for thought. All right, so let's move on to race two then, which is a citizen juvenile plate over 1,600 metres. Yes, the two-year-olds go 1,600 metres in the opening leg of the bipod. It's off at 12.20. The early favourite is number one, Max the Magician, a winner last time over 1,450 metres. Max the Magician at 22 to 10. Then we have number eight, Dakota Cat, at three to one, improving with each and every run and a daughter of Lancaster Bomber. Number three, Hollow Scene at four to one. Number two, Battle of Kursk at 11 to 2. Those are the runners quoted in single figures. What do you make of the opening leg of the bipod? Can we go light? Can we even possibly banker in the opening leg of the bipod? Graham, I'm going to trust my eye here. Um, number two, Battle of Kursk, I think is a, a definite inclusion because on debut, he stayed on nicely behind Bomb Bomb and was very, very unlucky. I know he finished behind Holocene, 
Um, but I think had he got a clearer run, he goes very, very close, number two, Battle of Kursk. He ran as if the step up in distance will suit. It's the first time around the turn, oh, sorry, rather, second run around the turn. He did go the Vol Classic track first time out. But he was the eye catcher in that run behind Bomb Bomb. I know Bomb Bomb won by a narrow margin on that occasion, but I think that he's got a lot of progress to come. And I think he'll finish in front of number three, Holocene. He had number four, Purple Pitcher behind him, and also Sugar Blast and Ten Star on that occasion. So I reckon that most of that form will stand up but with Battle of Coast turning it around and also with a valuable two and a half off the back from Donald Hirtzen. Um I, don't, I wouldn't be surprised if he ran right next to a stable companion I mean what six and a half kilos in favour of, of, of a horse that's likely to improve I think number two, Battle of Curse, because undoubtedly the value in race number two. Number one, Max the Magician, the only winner in the race. That has to be respected, obviously. I thought he won with a lot in hand, beating French Impact last time. Um, I'd hesitate to say that this is harder. I'm not sure that it is, but he has to shoulder weight. It won't be easy for a two-year-old to give weight away. And then number eight, Dakota Cat. We saw the Batula form line last time, uh, uh, on Thursday. Not come out trumps, dare I say, but the Egyptian male form is obviously very, very strong. So Dakota Cat would be no shock if she went close, especially with 54 kilos on her back. But I think the value certainly lies with number two, Battle of Kursk. I go one and two in the bar pot. Third race in the card is the World Sports Betting Grooms Initiative Maiden Plate over 1,600 metres, off at 12.55. This is the first leg of the place accumulator. Number one, Mo the Man is at 22 to 10. Number two, Free Movement at 33 to 10. Number seven, Royal Guide, very well-bred four-year-old son of Gimme the Green Light, who only recently made its debut. That's at five to one. Number four, Kambulu at six to one. And number three, Fast Duty is at eight to one. Unravel the first leg of the place accumulator for us. Um, I think the winner comes from one, two, or seven. I'd be leaning towards number one, Mo the Man here, Graham. Um, he was all over a winner at his penultimate start when Jet Dynasty got the better of him over the final, well, few strides, really. And obviously, Jet Dynasty was a winner at the Vol on Tuesday. I think he's going to develop into a useful stayer. I'd go with him, certainly over number two, free movement. I can't believe he got beaten last time. He may have gone too early, but that was such a weak field, a much weaker field than what he meets on Saturday. So number two, free movement with Muzi in the irons, perhaps with a little bit more of a conservative ride, he could be a little bit closer but i see that he's on the online sale um the bsa online sale in may so i don't know whether that's a signal of what's expected from number two free movement maybe a win here would obviously boost that price substantially um but the fact that he's on the sale i don't know if that's a bit of a white flag waving for number two free movement and then number seven royal guide he can only improve this step up and this will suit to no end um i'd, I'd you know, I wouldn't be singing from the rooftops about number seven guards' chance, but I think that he is probably, well, he's definitely the second trick to number one, Mo the Man. Number seven, Royal Guide, who was a 1,4 million rand yearling with a wonderful pedigree. Clearly something went wrong in the early stages for him only to make his debut as a four-year-old on the 1st of April a couple of weeks ago. But Mo the Man brings solid form into the race, and that is Alistair's first choice. The pick six, as you heard earlier, one million rand carryover. We're expecting the pool to reach seven million. And the first leg of the pick six is at 13.30. And it's the first of our features. The World Sports Betting SA Phillies Nursery Grade 2 over 1,160 metres. Now, often in the past in this, these races, we've had short-priced favourites. We've had horses jump out of the page at you. That is not the case. The favourite number one American graffiti is at 15 to 4. Number four, leaving Las Vegas at four to one. Number seven, Mrs. Geriatrics at nine to two. And number two, Cullen and Blue, winner on debut over Mary's Greenlight, is at eight to one. So it's a very competitive renewal of the Phillies nursery. What are you going with? Graham, you took the words out of my mouth when you said that this is probably the trickiest Phillies nursery um, in recent memory. It's also the hardest race on the card. So I think to be uh, to be pretty brief with this race, I've gone with six horses in my pick six. They are one American Graffiti, two Cullen and Blue, 
four leaving Las Vegas, seven Mrs. Geriatrics, eight Ronnie of Couture, and nine Red Hot Rose. Just a one liner on all of them. American Graffiti unbeaten. Tries 1160 for the first time. Being by Silvano, no reason to doubt her going that trip. Two Cullen and Blue held in very high regard. I must confess, she was a late inclusion for me. Uh, four leaving Las Vegas. Never looked like winning at all going through the final 200 in the Pretty Polly, but showed a lot of guts to get the job done. So she's obviously got the tenacity to go a little bit further than she ought to. Seven, Mr. Geriatrics. I'd actually lean towards her from the two Terry runners because I think she's just a little bit sharper than number one American Graffiti. Faree on board, that's eye-catching. Eight, Rani of Couture beating Woman of Fame, although she was disappointing. Uh, she beat Red Hot Rose, who she meets again. Red Hot Rose gets blinkers on for the first time. Rani of Couture probably got a little bit more improvement to come. And Rani of Couture, funny enough, is a half-sister to Maharani. And... Uh, Maharani um, they didn't win this race last year of course uh, she won the uh, the BSA two year old qualifying race so not quite lightning to strike twice but all in all number eight Ronnie have the improvements in the in the race so um, I've gone with those six horses in the open well I'm going to take your advice I'm going to put all six of those in but I'm going to throw one more in I don't uh, this horse number 11 is so seductive I know fourth two and a half lengths behind ripple effect should be held here but a beautifully bred daughter of Versing Gatorix, Keegan DeMello riding for JJ and Furin. If I'm going to put six in, I'm going to throw in seven just in case So Seductive does improve in leaps and bounds. Race five, as well, Graham. Race five, the World Sports Betting SA Nursery, grade 21160. And here again, it's not quite that simple. We've got a filly going head to head with a colt. Number five, Lucky Lad, 28 to 10. And number seven, Amber Rock, 28 to 10. Of course, they met on the 25th of March when Lucky Lad narrowly beat Amber Rock, but that was Amber Rock's debut. She might have improved more since, although they're all on the upward curve. Number six, Pure Predators at five to one. Number four, Jerusalem Rain at six to one. Number eight, Ripple Effect, 13 to two. And there's been a bit of an early nibble for number two, Guy Gibson from 12s into eight to one. Is this a match race between five Lucky Lad and seven Amber Rock? I've got both of them in and the six Pure Predator. I like Pure Predator's last one, although it's going to be much harder, Graham. Um, I thought that he won with a lot in hand. And, um, you know, I thought that that run will tee him up quite nasty for this race. But, yeah, no doubt, I think five and seven are, are the two main protagonists. Let's start with Amber Rock. That was a huge debut. Um, how she got beaten hard up on the inside on a wet track, that's not where you want to be. I spoke to Adam Azzi on Empress Club race day, and I said, how's Amber Rock doing? Is she, where's her next stop? And he said, we're only going to run her in, the, on, in one of the nurseries if she's absolutely popping. Well, here we are in one of the nurseries, so she must be absolutely popping. She's got a harder task to turn the form around with Lucky Lad, but things can only... Amber Rock, and the fact she got beaten half a length, I think, you know, she's obviously a serious, serious filly. Five Lucky Lad, though, his biggest attribute is obviously the desire and the fight that he's got. Um, he had no right to beat Sandring in Summit first time out, but he grits his teeth and fought hard for victory, and he did pretty much the same in beating Amber Rock. So with those attributes on his side, number five, Lucky Lad is definitely one to include, and we know Sean Terry's record on this particular day. So it'd be no surprise with number five, Lucky Lad, um, was another winner for him at, uh, at Champions Day. So five, six, and seven for me, Graham. That's uh, race four. Moving on now to race, uh, that was race five. Moving on now to race six, the Johnson Workwear Computer Form Sprint over 1,000 metres off at 14.45. So race five, of course, the World Sports Betting SA Nursery, the previous race we discussed. That was the first leg of the first jackpot. But being a 10 race card, the first leg of the second jackpot is race seven, and we'll get to that in a moment. So first up, race six, the Johnson Workwear Computer Form Sprint, grade one over 1,000 metres Always a thrilling contest. The off time is 14.45. Last year's winner, Master Archie, is back. He's not just back. He's the ruling favourite at 18 to 10. Craig Zaki takes the ride. His principal market threat is number nine, Princess Keller, who's been an absolute revelation this season when stepping back to sprint distances. Princess Keller's at three to one. Peter Muskets, Isi Vungu. Vungu, very talented, owned by the Hollywood Syndicate, is at 13 to 2. And of course, the outstanding sprinter, number 10, Sheila's at 7 to 1. The rest, all in double figures. Is Master Archie going to go back to back in the computer form sprint? 
Yes, Graham, I'll bank at him. You could only be impressed with his last win when he was covered up, saw daylights, and put them to bed at the drop of a hat. It was seriously impressive. It was refreshing to see him come back to his best. His computer form sprint win last year was obviously full of merit as well. Um, he's a year older, a year stronger, and um, I think that he'll take all the beating number one Master Archie. And I also think the race will set up for him um, just getting a little um, run in from, from horses like Roll with the Punches and a few other pacemakers. Karanga Tang, who likes to go forward as well. With regards to Princess Keller, I think the turpentine thousand metre might be a little bit too sharp for her. I think what many for gets is that as a three-year-old she ran the world sports betting met um, and she ran with distinction in the met so that just shows her versatility she's one of my favorites in training um i think after the setback that they had and missing the empress club stakes the race that she won last year i think that hollywood bet scottsville has now become a more a reasonable target if she wins she wins that's just testament to the filly that she is but I think that the setback might have just taken the wind out of herself only for a thousand meter, although just being fresh and sharp might just to uh, help her cause. And then I have respect for number 10, Sheila. I have respect for number four, Izzy Vungu Vungu. I like number three, Bartoldi, as a horse. I think number two, William Robertson, is tailor made for a few races down in Durban, not necessarily a thousand meter at Turpentine. And I know Gobsmacked, obviously, very good, um, but I don't know if they quite got the same class as number one, Master Archie. Master Archie for Alistair, winner of last year's computer form sprint and set to win the Johnson Workwear computer form sprint on Saturday at Turfenty. Now to the headliner, race seven on the card, the World Sports Betting Premier's Champions Challenge, 2,000 metres, off at 15.20. Let's have a look at the betting. The former champion two-year-old and champion three-year-old filly and winner of the Triple TR over year number 11, Rain in Holland, bounced back to form in the recent Colorado King Stakes, she is at three to one. Number one, Puerto Manzano is at nine to two. Number 12, Billy Bowling's at six to one. The very consistent, the very game, number four, Nebras at nine to one, with Spear Stradham in the irons. The rest in double figures. Uh, an interesting renewal because uh, we've got obviously the Summer Cup winner, Puerto Manzano. We've got Golden Duckett, a champion of yesteryear, didn't have a very auspicious debut on the high felt. We've got MK's Pride, we've got Nebras. The question is, is Rain in Holland really back to her burst? Can we trust her? We know she's had a wind operation. She's got some issues, but she did win well last time. What do you make of Rain in Holland? She's got two kilos to play with with Nebras as well. I know Nebras wasn't really punched out over the closing stages, and he had a tough 2,850-meter race uh, um, in the Caradoc Gold Cup where Sean Terry took advantage of the wet conditions on the half belt and ran an obviously fit horse and, and beating Shangani, who runs later on in the card. So I think Nebras um, is definitely alive. He's in my pick six. But what I saw last time, Rain and Holland looked like she was back to her best. And I think we should change her run in the Met. There were a lot of hard luck stories in the world sports winning Kate Met. She was definitely one of them when she was four and a half lengths behind Jet Dark. Um, you know, you can make the argument for a lot of horses, Graham, that had she got a clear run, she finishes a lot closer. She is definitely in that bunch for the argument. So I think she is back to her best. Richard Faree, her best friend's back on board. I like what I saw last time. The interesting kicker to this race, and it's going to be a debate that we'll have for the next two and a half months for obvious reasons, are the three-year-olds. This race, traditionally, I remember the first two runnings of this race were won by Pick Six and Eddington. They were three-year-olds when they won this race at the uh, at the start of the um, of the Pre President's Champions Challenge in its current guise. Number 12, Billy Bowlegs, the South African derby was not run to suit. If they go a pace yet, he'll be very effective. He's a horse that's always been on my radar. His biggest weapon is a turn of foot. I'm not sure the race is going to be run to suit him again, but I also expect Gavin Larina to have a plan B this time. So if they do crawl, I think that he'll, from, from an advantageous draw, I'm hoping that he'll have options and maybe get a little bit closer than last time. So I'm interested to see how number 12 Billy Bowlegs runs. I'll be annoyed if he won and I left him out. I've got three horses in the pick six. They are 4, 11 and 12 with 11 my top choice. Rain in Holland. Just a quick comment about one horse, the classic winner of uh, his three-year-old year, Red Saxon. He shows signs of coming back to his best form. Kamala's riding up a storm for Joey Soma. The stable's in good form. We know he has the ability. What do you make of Red Saxon? 
I'm not convinced he stays, Graham. Um, you know, Joe Samo in a group one on the half halt is deadly, as we saw with Red Saxon last year. I mean, he's even taken a horse like Rule by Force from an 86, and he's now a 108 running in a group one at weight for age uh, level. So that just shows what Joey can do with his horses. But I doubt Red Saxon over a tough. All right, then, let's move on to race eight, the World Sports Betting Camellia Stakes, grade two over 1160 metres. An interesting renewal because we have the presence of two Western Cape trained fillies, Stiptilik and Wo Wo Wo. The favourite is number eight, Kiss Me Captain, at around two to one. Three, Stiptilik and four, Sweet Pepper, both at five to one. One, Bivant, Bon Vivant, and five, Cold Fact, at around eight to one. Number six, Wo Wo Wo, at nine to one. Kiss Me Captain does look to be a worthy favourite. Uh, I think the engagement of Richard Perry is very noteworthy here, Graham. Kiss Me Captain was so unlucky not to beat Alula Star last time. Um, even though I think this is a level up, I think that she's up to it. Um, she looked very impressive at the start of her career. The only bad run she had valid excuses for, um, I think that she'll take all the beating in the Camellia Stakes. Obviously, the two Cape runners are very interesting. I believe they've been up in Joburg for uh, the better part of a month, both number three, Stiptilic, and also number six, Whoa, Whoa, Whoa. They're worth respecting, but I've banked number eight, Kiss Me Counts, and I pick six. I'm going to be in and out um, with her. I think that, you know, of the main dangers... You know, number two, full velocity is drawn on the wrong side of the track. I, I, I think that she needs a lot of luck in running. If she gets the right gaps, then she could be dangerous. Number one, Bob Bavant, her last run was just, she was entitled to need it coming back from a three and a half month layoff. But I, I, I expected more from number one, Bob Bavant, and I think connection with it as well. So I think everything just points number eight, Kiss Me Cats, and I think she's progressive. I think she's versatile, and I think that she'll make amends for her last start. We stay with the Phillies and Mares for race nine on the card. The World Sports betting Gerald Rosenberg stakes grade two over 2,000 metres. The penultimate on the card in the last leg of the carryover pick six, which is due off at 16.30. And uh, the favourite here is the SA Phillies Classic winner, number eight, Bless My Stars for the Kamalo Terry combination. That is quoted at five to two. Three, Gilded Butterfly at five to one. Number five, Terra Time at 11 to two. And number six, Bureau de Legende at six to one. So we've got Bless My Stars in the race, and that is the nap selection for the day by the computer form tipster, Rod Beckers, and he's quite a shrewdy as old Rod Beckers. He makes uh, Bless My Stars the nap of the day. What do you think of Bless My Stars? I make Bless My Stars very hard to beat in the Gerald Rosenberg Graham. Remember, Rain and Holland won all three legs of the Volkerbostra Triple Tiara and then won the Gerald Rosenberg last year. And I think Rain and Holland had a far harder campaign than Bless My Stars. And I know Bless My Stars went the same route, but every time Rain and Holland won those three legs of the Volkerbostra Triple Tiara just over 12 months ago, it looked like she really stretched and was made to work. Whereas Bless My Stars, even though she, she stretched every sinew in the Volkerbostra South African Phillies Classic, um, you know, there's no such thing as a soft run in a graded race. But if we go back a couple of races, and I said the South African Derby was run slowly, the Volkerbos Drift South African Oaks was run even slower. And I'm not too sure where Bless My Stars was asked to, to stay. I'm not too sure that uh, Sean Terry got any indication out of that because they walked and she was just stuck between a rock and a hard place from a deep draw and got going far too late. So number eight, Bless My Stars, top choice. Seven, Bold Fortune. There's good whispers coming out of the yard about number seven, Bold Fortune. She's good on her day. I'm worried that she's forgotten how to win. And she's also um, not very well weighted, number seven, Bold Fortune. But I've got her in because she was unlucky last time behind Bureau de Lejeune. She gets... Um, a a slight pull at the weights from number, from number six, Bureau de Lejean. I think that she'll turn the form around having a third run after a rest. And then number 10, Emma Jean is also very interesting, trying this distance for the first time. I know Ray Magna thinks that she'll stay. I'm not convinced, but Mr. Magna is a far better trainer than me, so I'll bow to his superior knowledge. A bless my stars, strongly out on top, but I've got a few just to back up in case. The tenth and final race, due off at five past five, is the World Sports Betting Gold Bowl Grade Three over three thousand two hundred meters at the top of the weights. Uh, last season's Gold Cup winner Shangani, the five-year-old son of soft falling rain out of that wonderful Irish mare Goran Goza, by Monsieur. There's no doubting he stays. There's no doubting he's the best horse in the race as far as the lineup is concerned. 
but weight can be a great leveller, although he did carry the weight last time out when finishing ahead of Arumagum when they ran behind uh, Nebras in the Caradoc Gold Cup. Now they go an extra 350 metres. Is Shangani going to lump all this weight to victory, or is Arumagam very much alive? I think they're the only two horses in the race. I'm leaning towards Arumagam uh, here, Graham. I know that it's become cliché, but where am I with the stage? It's just different division. Um, and I think that he's had an eye on this race ever since the year turn, since his win at the Racing Association handicap over this course and distance. I think that this has been his target. I have a lot of respect for number one, Shangani, but as you rightly mentioned, it is going to be a hard ask going two miles and given 10 kilos. I know that he's done it before. He beat Shangani on the 4th of February and they meet on exactly the same weight uh, terms, but... Although you can make the same argument for Shangani, I think Arumagam was was quietly ticking over with this race in mind, whereas I think Shangani was, was guns blazing last time going into the Caradoc Gold Cup. So I'll go with number two, Arumagam, but healthy, healthy respect for number one, Shangani. I'm not sure Tsababua stays. I'm not sure Future Pearl um, warrants a huge penalty, although this was not a handicap. Um, so, you know, so he was comes in badly at number four. After that huge penalty, it'll be interesting to see how he shapes up. I'm not convinced. If I'm not convinced about future pull, I've got to make the same argument for top sale. I don't think flying first class is at the same level. An Apache, Pfizer, and Electric Surge, I think they've got their work cut out despite a very, very loud weight. So two from one for me in the finale. If we're in trouble, I'm taking the boxed exactor. For what it's worth, uh, I'm on exactly the same page as you. Two horse race between one Shangani and two Arumagam. I'm also slightly favouring Arumagam. It's going to be interesting to see, though, whether Tababuya, who's by global view out of a Fortwood mare, does go the extra ground. Uh, but I'm sitting on the fence with that one. Gary Players colours to the fore with Tababuya. Now, we said we've got a pick six carryover. It's a million rand. We're expecting the pool to get to seven million rand. Your suggested bet. Uh, for us today is a pick six perm. You've kept it quite small, 162 rand for a full unit. So there's plenty of scope for our listeners and uh, our viewers to, to add their own horses. So take us through uh, your pick six. Well, the only addition I'm going to make is in the first leg with number 11, so seductive. So one, two, four, seven, Eight, nine, and then bracketed with number 11, so seductive in the uh, South African Philly Nursery. By uh, five, six, and seven, lucky lad, pure predator, and amber rock. I could have gone two horses there, but I've just liked enough of what I saw of pure predator. But banker number one, master Archie, to win the Johnson work where computer form sprint for the second year running. By uh, four, 11, and 12, so those on the brass, Rain in Holland, and Billy Bolex with 11 and 12, my two top selections. By uh, banker number eight, kiss me, captain. And then the final leg, I've been seven, eight, and I think that should be 7, 8, and 10 for me in the final leg of that pick six. 7, 8, and 9 is what you've given us, but 9 we know is a scratching, so we're going to change that to 7, 8, and 10, because 9, Lady of Power, is a card scratching. Now, we record the show on a Friday morning, as we all know by now, and we caught Alistair um, in Port Elizabeth, having just stepped off an early morning flight. He's on duty in Port Elizabeth this Friday. So, Alistair, have a wonderful time, and we'll hear from you again at Turfantine on Saturday. Thanks, Graham. Cheers, Alistair, and thanks for watching.